I think this is the spot. Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we're doing something that many of you have been waiting for, I know, because I've heard lots of comments about it. We are going to start planning and building the homestead, the Woodland Homestead chicken coop. Now, I had uh, talked about this in past, a couple past videos. Uh, had some plans, had some ideas, and those have evolved since then. And I'm glad I kind of stalled and waited a little bit on this because there's been, been some factors that have changed, uh, changed plans, some external factors. So number one, we need to build a chicken coop. It needs to be large enough to house, uh, I don't know, I would like to be able to put 20 chickens in there, maybe 25 chickens in there. So it's gonna be something about six foot by eight feet or somewhere around there. Uh, I think that'll, that'll house them comfortably, especially for winter time. That's goal number one. The other goal is that we have a goat shelter underneath it. So very similar to the suburban coop, it's gonna be built off the ground. Uh, a little higher though, so that there's more room underneath it for uh, some goats or possibly future pigs or other things like that that'll be out in these pastures that they can get get uh, shelter underneath it. And on top of that will be a chicken coop that will be large enough to, to house the chickens. But because of COVID and other things that have had, I don't, I don't understand the, the all the reasons why lumber costs are the way they are, but here we are in 2021 and lumber is insanely expensive. Uh, if I were going to build this thing all out of wood and you do a tree fort style uh, chicken coop like I had originally planned, it would have cost me literally probably $2,000 or more to build this thing. It, it is unbelievable. Just sheets of OSB and, you know, posts and and all the, the two by six, you know, uh, and two by eight beams and brackets and all that stuff. Wood is so expensive right now, especially treated wood, that uh, I, I just... I wanted to find another way. And so here is uh, something I have found a ton of around here that I think I can use to build this for far less. So over here along the property, we have piles and piles of this uh, field stone. This is stone that basically came from the field. Um, I've talked about this before, but we've got farm fields here and all along the edge of this farm field and our property, is just piles of rows of rocks like this and they're a good two two feet deep you know in the ground and so if i could get the tractor up here i could probably dig out even more but i mean they're just everywhere um they dug a propane line in here right right through here and, and this all just came out of that you know <laughs> that area so there's some real big ones in there and then there's a lot of ones that uh, are this size so lots of them that summer can lift it's a perfect this is my kind of rock perfect size so instead of building a wood frame, kind of a standard style chicken coop, we are gonna build a stone chicken coop. Uh, I can use a very small mortar mixer, pre-mixed mortar, or I can mix my own mortar and we can build a, a chicken coop that will be just as big. It will be sturdier, last a lot longer, and I think we can do this for just a fraction of the cost. So today we're gonna lay out the footing for this. Um, obviously, instead of putting posts in the ground like you would with a normal chicken coop, for this, because we're gonna use stone walls, we're gonna to need to actually build a footing that it's gonna sit on um, and have some, you know, it's gonna have some weight to it. And so we wanna put something in the ground that, that can kind of stabilize this whole thing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. We'll get it laid out and we'll get it kind of dug in. So let's pick a location and start getting this laid out. So just coming in the uh, little goat pastures, we've got a second pasture on that side and then on this side we've got where the milking mama, uh, we've got the, the new goat mom and her kids in this one. And we've got a spot here, um, it's not too far from the house, so the house is right here. We've got kind of a gap where we've got paths and things. And there's an area right in here that's fairly clear. Uh, future pole barn is going to go over there and so I think you know it actually will probably go up in this area over here and so I don't think it will be in the way here at all we're still all up on the hill this is kind of flat so we shouldn't have any water issues everything kind of runs away from it so I think this is our spot so we're gonna get some stakes in the ground and start laying this out where should I put it? all right let's put uh, set them down there I 
How do you pot the duck before? Climb the fish. Aw, baby, you're normal. So as you're stretching out string lines, a trick that my brother-in-law taught me, thank you, Dan, uh, for putting these string lines on the uh, stakes is you use a little trick with uh, when you tie it on so it, it will remain tight and that you can easily tighten it. So on the outside here, you take the loose end, wrap it around, and then you wrap this one around the top. And that, it locks in on itself that way. So this is, you can't pull on this side, it's tight. But this side you can pull on. So watch, I'll, I'll give it a little slack and then you can actually tighten it by pulling on both of them. So now this is, this side is tight. So I'll do it again, just kind of pull. And so now this side is tight, it won't, it won't let go that way, but you can pull it through this way. So you can keep tightening up your, your stakes that way. And it works really good, actually, um, once I got it down. So you can watch the video a couple times, I guess, if you need to watch it. But it took me a little time to practice it to, to really get it down where I can uh, do it a little quicker now. So, Okay, so the next thing we got to do is make sure that all of our corners are square. Make sure that the box we're making is, is square. So uh, a couple ways to do that. You can use just a speed square um, and just kind of stick it in there and... And that'll tell you uh, it's pretty close, might be off just a little bit. And we'll adjust our stakes accordingly. So, and the other method is the 3 4 5 method. I'm sure many of you have heard of this. All you do is it's basically the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, you have three inches right there, four inches on this side of the triangle and then C will be five so if we put this in here like so and that is pretty darn close right there so we'll call this corner square and move on to the next one that one looks good Okay, Goaty, we heard ya. Okay, yeah, yep, yep. okay good. Pull it right on that axe right there, right there. That where? This? Yep, just right on the right on the axe. So I'll explain why I did this in just a minute, but I squared this all up now, so this is square, but in, in order to do that I had to move this string or these stakes uh, down further uh, on both sides as I kind of did it, you know, one side and the other. But now it's uh, it's too big. So eight feet comes right to this mark. I put a little mark on the string. So now I just have to do is tap that stake back and move the string back to eight feet exactly on both sides. And then we should be square and everything should be aligned. Okay, we're at six feet. So we have our uh, rectangle. It's six feet by eight feet. This is gonna be the footprint of the chicken coop. And so we're going to try to, uh, to dig a trench now. Uh, we're gonna have a, a, I guess, kind of a trench footing. It's gonna be uh, not as deep as you would do under a normal building because this is a smaller building. It doesn't need a, uh, a four foot you know, trench footing underneath it to hold the weight. So we're gonna go down about two feet. So we're gonna use these lines as a guide and we're gonna dig our trenches. Uh, we're only going to need to dig three, so we'll dig around along this side, and then along the back wall here, and then along that side. This side over here will be open. Um, I'll probably just dig a corner over, maybe a foot in on that side, and maybe a foot in on that side, uh, just to give us a little bit of extra support on the corner. And then we're going to run a beam across the top part of it, so this will be a big door that's open, and the goats can get in and out of there. You ready to start digging? You kill all the trees yet? All right, get your shovel. On the outside of it, all the way down. Can you do the outside of it? First I did Here, it you then. can get this, go on the outside, and just scoop this to prep. So sometimes what you lack in... Hold on, hold on, it's not enough, it's not enough. We'll take it the string, it's just getting little bits. Just getting little bits, like that, see? Look at this, we're digging up rocks that we're going to use. So if you're ever at home, maybe sitting on the couch, hanging out, watching some YouTube videos, and you wondered, what is it like to work in 
10,000% humidity. Now you know. It's awful. Well, <laughs> it's pouring rain. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm coming in. Let's just. Oh my just making progress, too. <laughs> she left me. She, she stopped digging a while ago and came out here for this. Well, we'll get to test out our new uh, drainage for the driveway. And then you can scoop out the loose stuff, you know? What'd you have for lunch today? A bagel. That's it? Just some bread? Yeah. How's that working out for you? I'm tired. <laughs> Arms are tired. Doing great. Okay. Okay, this is what we have so far. So we're, uh, we're at about 16 inches to 20 inches in different areas, just depending. And I think that's going to be just fine for this. So these are all the rocks that we dug out of the trench. And these are other rocks that Kayla just brought over. And so we're going to be putting a combination of those and these back into the trench. And we're just going to be filling it up about halfway all the way around. And then the next time we work on this, the next phase is going to be to actually fill that with cement um, and make this kind of a solid footing. We're using the rocks to take up space, basically, so we have to spend less money on cement. And so it should, uh, it's a chicken coop. It should be fine. Um, the, cement, the stone wall that's going to go up here is going to be a lot of weight, but it's, uh, it's not going to be that big. So, All right, let's do this. Okay. So let's put the Wait, biggest, like biggest rocks in first. Okay. And, I mean, it doesn't really matter which way it goes in, but if there's a flat side, just put it, put it facing, facing down, I guess. All right, and that's the idea. So we've got the first layer of rock in there and everything looks pretty good. So next we'll get some, some cement, mix it up and we'll mix it up real wet and I'll pour it in there. We'll work it in all the way around all those rocks, get it, get it down to the ground and fill in all the cracks. And then we'll keep adding more and more rock to it as we go and we'll fill it all the way up with cement and rock all the way up to the top. And then we'll start our first uh, layer of, of the wall It'll stick right in the concrete as we move across. And then we'll get, a, get some mortar from there on out and we'll use mortar to uh, continue the wall all the way up. So if you can picture it, it's gonna come up probably, I don't know, I'd say about four feet. And then it's gonna have a floor in it. And then the stone will continue up about another foot or two. So it's gonna be about five to six feet off the ground. And then the, uh, it'll have a peaked roof. 
uh, and then the chickens will be up top. So we'll probably have to put a couple windows in it uh, for the goats so there's airflow through there. We don't want it to be all dark and dingy. Chickens will be up top and they'll have a door probably come up, you know, their, their entrance will be off the back or underneath. And then the goats will be able to come in and out through the front there. So, well, we fought through some, uh, some rain and some mud and some uh, goat manure and other things out here, but we have a, a, a plan and we've started. And that sometimes is the absolute hardest part, hardest step to any of these projects is just getting started, getting the, the part of the grunt work done. This was one of the hardest steps, you know, all the digging and it's not that fun. You don't see a lot of progress. Uh, in fact, we've, it's, it's almost like we've made negative progress because nothing's been built up. We've, we've just dug a hole <laughs> and filled with rocks, but, but it's a start. And now that we get started, it's like, uh, you, you don't want to stop. And so we'll get, keep moving on this thing as, as time permits. Uh, we got to get a cement mixer over here and we got to get some, some, uh, cement and some mortar and, and start, uh, collecting rocks and, and making this a, we'll make this probably a family project. I'm sure a few days should be a lot of fun. I'm also thinking about getting an Alaskan sawmill. I've been been putting this off. I said I wouldn't do it. I was always planning on getting a real, you know, hobby type sawmill, band sawmill. Um, and uh, it, it just keeps getting pushed off and pushed off. And so in the meantime, I think I might might grab an Alaskan sawmill and, and go get some, some oak timbers out of the woods here uh, to use for this. So let me know what you guys think of the plan so far. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting on this chicken coop build. Goat shelter, chicken coop, both things, I guess. Uh, but it should be a lot of fun here uh, from here on out and you'll, you'll be expecting some videos coming out as, as, uh, as we have time to make progress on this thing. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Of course, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the SSL Family Dad channel, let me have you tag along and uh, see, see what comes out of this whole thing. What's it going to end up like? Uh, plan and builds are, they, sometimes plans change and a lot of times based on your feedback. So I'd love to hear from you guys' comments below. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.